Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. Hi, I'm Chancellor Karen Whitney and today we're going to talk about how students can pick that just right living learning community for their college experience. We're joined today by an awesome panel and let me introduce you to them. We've got Kent Dahlquist, Director of Housing and Dining Services at Kutztown University. Hi Kent. How Hi. You doing? We've got Dr. Scott Helfrich, who's Director of Housing and Residential Programs at Millersville University. Dr. Helfrich. Hello. And we're joined by today by Isela Mendez, a senior international business major, Spanish minor at Millersville University. She's also serving in her second year as a resident assistant. Isela, nice to see nice you. Nice to see you too. Well, thank you guys. Let's talk about housing and just that right living learning experience. Isela, tell us a little more about yourself? I come from a large family so with any type of spare time I love to do crafts, I love to do painting. I also have an obsession with Clint Eastwood movies believe it or not. Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. Very good. Well hey let me ask you Dr. Helfrich, how do you work with students at Millersville determining the right <clears throat> living learning uh, community? Well we try to provide a safe and engaging living learning environment for our students on campus particularly within our residence halls and we provide various options for them um, so they have a good environment, educational environment throughout their entire college career. Typically what we try to do is have our first and second year students live with us in our suite style living and then for their last two years as a junior and as a senior they'll live uh, typically within our apartment housing or our town housing, uh, our townhouse housing, which is part of our um, public private partnership um, with our partners there. Um, and it helps them because we want to support them with their academic efforts. Um, we try to place students by their particular majors. Um, we co locate them either by their particular college or by their majors. That way, they not only have a good in-class experience, but outside of class as well. So they can interact with their peers and talk about um, class activities and interact with their faculty at, out, outside of class as well. Um, and then we also have living learning options, particularly like our honors college, um, where students are co-located together in a particular building and work together and have classes together surrounding that um, particular um, department. Plus, we try to financially support our students as well with housing scholarships. We give approximately a million dollars every year for um, our residential students, so that way they can be successful um, in staying on our campus wow. as well. So that's something we're very proud of. Very helpful. Well, thank you. Well, Kent, tell us a little bit about what uh, the program is at Kutztown. Well, first, thank you for having us. This sure. is a great topic. Uh, I think Scott would agree that we're very fortunate to work in higher education. Uh, the opportunity to interact with young people, especially in a living learning environment, just allows us to work with them and help them develop. At Kutztown University, uh, the housing department works with a number of offices on the campus in the recruitment aspect of helping the students identify the place they would like to go in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once the students are here, we work with a number of offices on the retention. Uh, living learn learning communities would be one of those areas. Uh, we work very closely with a number of academic programs on both living learning communities and special interest groups. Um, we collaborate on programming and opportunities for the students to be able to do a lot more outreach in their major while living in the residence hall. Uh, in addition, we also manage a dining program on campus. Wow, we're going to talk some more about that. Well, let's go ahead and uh, plan to take a break and go ahead and, and we're, right now we're going to go visit Bloomsburg University. Well, the wonderful thing about Sultz Hall is that it's truly a multifunction building. We have not only housing, which is one of the main functions of the building, there's the university store, which is run by our community government association. There are two dining venues here, and one of the most important features is the integrative learning space, which is really important because it really shows us living our mission with aligning student affairs and academic affairs and really embracing student learning outside the classroom. Um, we also have the university mail hub, which is here, and it's, it's really provided an incredible convenience for our students because they have 24 seven package pickup. Students aren't tethered to our schedules. They can do things on their own time. This is our first attempt at Bloomsburg University at a full suite building. Uh, prior to that we only had about 24 beds on campus so this having almost 400 beds is a new and unique uh, feature for our campus. 
Also, we have four primary tenants in the building, which again is something fairly unique to residence life here at Bloomsburg. It is in many ways transitional living. One of the unique features of this is you have an individual bedroom, which you wouldn't have in a traditional residence hall. However, we don't provide them with full kitchens. Um, there's a certain sense of independent living with a full-size refrigerator, microwave, and a common living space area, but we still have students on our campus participate in our traditional meal plan. This building gave us an opportunity to really look at how we would design from the ground up uh, what, we, what we are now calling our integrative learning space. So services like the Writing Center, our Math Lab, tutoring are being used in those spaces. Those lounges provide an opportunity with the flexibility where students can gather socially, they can gather in study groups, they can study independently. All of those things um, are very important because it's, it's part of a community. There, there are a lot of intentional concepts that go into a residential program. One of them is the physical nature of, of that, and then you combine it with programs you know, um, that, that are offered for students in helping that transition from high school to college is extremely important for them as they make that transition. The programming that we do enhances the student experience because we provide them an ability to learn about themselves, appreciate others, learn the art of negotiation, learn the art of compromise, uh, all things that are necessary functions once you get into the working world. I think the uniqueness of the building is that it melds so many different student functions in one area. It really creates a hub on this end of campus for students, for student life, for student learning. Your students are using it a lot and we're very proud of that. Welcome back. Uh, we're talking about student housing and how it really is critical to student success. Can't let me follow up with you some more uh, about what we were talking about earlier. Uh, why is living on campus important for college students? You know, there's, a, there's a number of reasons that the campus experience, living in a residence hall system, is important to a college student today. Um, first, the opportunity to interact with their peers, uh, obviously, and build the friendships and relationships that they might have for the remainder of their life, depending on how they're participating at the university. But, I, but one of the things I spent a lot of time talking to families about is the importance of involvement. When they come to college and they know they're going to be sitting in a classroom, they know they're going to be working on their academics. But what are they doing outside the classroom? Mm -hmm. What are they doing to elevate their experience, grow as an individual, and create something that will benefit them at graduation? Mm -hmm. So we talk about the importance of getting involved. As simple as getting involved in your academic majors club or taking a leadership position in a residence hall association. But we really do try to impress upon them that while living at a university, take the opportunity to get out, be active, learn and grow from those experiences outside the classroom to help them better prepare for the future. Mm -hmm. At Kutztown, mm -hmm. we offer three varieties of residence halls, a traditional residence hall, suite style hall and apartment living. And we start our first year students off in the traditional residence hall. Certain privileges, certain benefits come from that. As they advance through the years, they have the opportunity to move in more into more independent housing, suite style or apartment. And then where they get to the apartments, now they're taking care of themselves in every way. They're doing their own cooking, they're doing their own cleaning. 
when they have the time to clean. Yeah. Uh, but, but all in all, just the opportunity to just to grow as an individual. Sure. No, that's very important. In fact, Isela, why do you think students should live on campus rather than living off campus? What would be your pitch to an incoming student? Um, my pitch would be um, developing better life skills. Cleaning up for yourself is a big issue with <laughs> the newer generation of students, I'm going to be honest. And another thing, time management too, because you're on your own. you got to wake yourself up. You have your set schedule for today. You have to be time um time you know management. Mm -hmm. What about the programs? Talk to me about some of your programs because you know the thing you get isn't just a, a great place to sleep but mm -hmm. there's a whole residential oh, yes. program. We're, um, we create programs for people to come out to events. We will do craft nights, we'll do evenings where we're like hey promoting a club on campus that's recently looking for more students to join. Other activities like field trips that might be happening within the college within that month we make sure they get updates on that as well and just like building that community bond with them having them come out and speak to us one-on-one. -on -one. That's what we like to see with our residents and students. Alike. So the program builds that kind of community yes. that we were just talking about yes. that makes a difference. It does. Well, Dr. Helfrich, <coughs> why are RAs like you still so important to our, our first-year students? They're crucial because the first six weeks of a new student's experience on campus is important because it sets the routine for the year and also pretty much for the duration of their college career and what they're going to do, where they go, um, it, it, it's important. So the RAs, um, the resident assistants, are student leaders. Usually they're, um, they're sophomore, junior, and senior student leaders um, who live within the residence halls and they're there as a resource. They're there to help guide um, the residential students through the college experience. So for a lot of our students, it's the first time that they are away from home, away from their family for an extended amount of time, and they might not necessarily have a connection to the university quite yet. So that RA is that person that can be that resource to help them get connected to resources on campus, whether it's a club or organization or a faculty member, counseling services, health services, and if the RA doesn't necessarily have the answer, they'll find somebody who can get them the answer. So it's very important for to have um, those student leaders on our campus. So the RA as well as the other staff in residence life really end up becoming a critical resource and support structure Absolutely. for students to be successful that you wouldn't find anywhere else. That's correct. Oh, yeah. That's terrific. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take a quick break and head on out to Indiana University. Hi, I'm Tyler Perry from Hershey, PA. I'm a criminology pre-law student here at IUP and a member of the marching band. You know, the days of the old one-room dorm are long gone. We've since replaced them with our spacious suites. They're designed to help you succeed in the classroom and in the IUP community. Each of our eight suite-style residence halls is part of the living learning communities. These programs allow residents to participate in activities and experiences specifically themed to their academic college, major, or area of interest. Living Learning Wise, we connect with a partner, and the partner is usually a faculty member, so this helps strengthen the tie between home and classroom, and helps the students out academically. But one of the things that I really value about participating in the Living Learning community is this opportunity to meet students where they live. Uh, students most often come to me in my office hours or in my classroom, which is uh, my space, but I really value being able to go into their spaces and being able to um, learn things from them in the same way that they learn things from me. I would recommend any student coming to a living learning community because the resources that the living learning community offers, you cannot get it off campus. Um, the, the people and the, the support and uh, the community feel, the, the social uh, life that you have in the living learning community is unlike anything else. The living learning communities offer an opportunity for, um, for additional focus on student-centeredness, um, the ways in which uh, students can create opportunities for learning outside of the classrooms. Um, and so they bring the things that they learn from the classrooms out into the residence communities. I've participated with um, community assistants, for example, a community assistant from the Dominican Republic, um, who shared things about his um, culture with um, residents in the residence hall. And then I was able to be there to sort of um, support and add some information that I knew as a professor, but it was really his activity that he created for his residents. The suites have it all. They have one, 
two, or four bedrooms, and everything you'll need to be comfortable. Each one has a kitchenette, private bathrooms and closets, and the larger ones even have a living room. And to make it all easier for you, you can choose your roommate, suite style, and community online. I think it just gives them a better sense of connection to the campus as a whole, to not only live on campus and be in a residence hall, but, be, but to be an active member of a living learning community. Welcome back. Today we're talking about student housing and how important it is to student college success. Let me ask you, Isela, how has your experience as an RA impacted your college career? It's impacted my college career by being able to curate within the residential halls a community within the students. Again, with the one-on-one -on -one communication with them, that's always key for whenever they're freshmen and they still need help navigating campus life and just finding other activities to do within the college itself. So you find you've really made a big difference made, in the I've lives made, of your students. Yeah, I've seen development through like halfway through the semester and I'm really excited to see how they'll be by May. Uh, this coming spring. Well, that's got to be really gratifying because you're a student also. Yes, I so am. So that's terrific. Hey, let me ask you, Dr. Helfrich, can you talk a little bit about how living learning communities and other student housing opportunities enhance a student's college experience from your perspective? Sure. Well, research shows that students who are engaged in their campus, campus life are more likely to persist and graduate. So if we can create those out of classroom experiences, students will most likely persist and graduate. Um, myself, when I was an undergraduate student at Lock Haven University, I was extremely involved in the living learning environment. I myself was an RA, I was involved in the Resident Hall Association, and through those experiences I was able to travel the country to go to student leadership conferences and present, and because of that, that's how I decided to become a student affairs and higher education professional. So it's those kind of opportunities that we're trying to create at Millersville for our students so they can get so much more outside of the classroom as well. Um, and those living learning opportunities, actually, students who were involved in them will actually perform better academically sure. than those who were not involved in those. Um, at Millersville, we, um, as part of our strategic plan, um, we try to engage learners. And through that, we're making living learning options, particularly with our Honors College um, and other academically based um, initiatives with classrooms within the residence halls, working with faculty um, in order to have them come in and do different programs related to classrooms and the different academic majors. And it's, it's extremely exciting to have those partnerships. And students get so much more out of their living learning experience instead of just a meal and a bed. So that's the environment we're trying to create and, and we're very glad of that. So you're really trying to bring that academic experience in the classroom into where people are living. Absolutely. That's yes. very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Kent, let me ask you, in terms of how do the state system's housing options, in your opinion, compare to uh, other universities throughout the Commonwealth? That's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, I've been fortunate enough to visit 12 of the 14 schools in the time I've worked for the mm -hmm. state system higher education. Uh, and I've got to see the inventory of buildings that they're providing for their students. And I think all of us are taking a very positive approach uh, to renovating and providing an environment that's more of what our students are expecting today. In addition, uh, the 14 of us, the state directors for housing, communicate often throughout the year, uh, asking questions, bouncing ideas off one another, uh, sharing things that we might want to think about and see how we're doing compared to one another. Mm -hmm. So I think we're always striving to provide an opportunity for our students that are living on the state system campuses the best living arrangement that we can provide. Um, comparing it to other universities within the Commonwealth, um, first I'd like to think that we're above the curve <laughs> in that area. Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I do know that, you know, having interacted at conferences in the, states, in the, in the state itself w with some other universities, um, I think all in all our facilities probably are at par with everybody else or better. Well, I can, I can tell you, I visited all 14, and I think we have some of the best student housing in American higher education, and I'm so proud of the program and yes. what's occurring there. We need to go ahead and take a break, and we're going to head on out to Clarion University. The benefits of living in the suites here on Main Street are there's just 
numerous benefits for them. The rooms are either semi-private or private. You can have up to four people in a room, but everyone has their own restroom facilities within that. They're very high-tech. They all have their internet connections. You can have TV connections. There's computer access everywhere. There are also study suites midway point through each hall that have large screen TVs. You can do group study sessions. One thing that is just phenomenal to me is there's also laundry facilities on every floor for everything the today's student really wants to access. There are also a lot of advantages just to the buildings themselves. The suites on Main South houses our Clarion University bookstore as well as houses a couple of eating establishments that make it much nicer and convenient to come right out of your dorm room and go downstairs and have breakfast or your Starbucks coffee. In the suites on Main North, there's also an integral movie theater, something new and different for the Clarion University community. The community is part and was part of the thinking of building these suites in the location of where they are. Uh, the retail component of that is at ground level that it's easy to walk to. It's a continuation of the downtown of Clarion. And they can access any of the services the same as the students can here. Uh, one of the things they did when they moved the bookstore down here to the suites was expand the selection of things that would normally be sold in a regular bookstore. Because there is no other bookstore within uh, driving distance of downtown Clarion. So that's a very big bonus for them. It also provides just kind of a nice gateway for the students and the community to be able to walk, live together, and form that community bond. We have a very nice welcoming campus. People are very open to saying hello, what's going on, that type of interaction, and the fact that we're down on Main Street and you can interact with the community opens up the college to them. It's, it's not its own little segregated area anymore. And I think it makes a nice presence within the community and the students feel the people of Clarion are very open and welcoming and they feel respected in the community. It really makes it a real well-rounded experience for them and a nice place to call home. Welcome back. We're talking about student housing and how to make that just best pick on where you should live in your student housing when you go to college. Kent, based on, on that idea of pick, making a good pick, what advice would you give students looking to find just that right student housing experience for themselves? First, I would say that when you visit a college campus, take the opportunity to visit each type of housing available at that university, yes. whether it's traditional residence halls, suites, or apartments. I think each school in the state system has a variety of selection to pick from and get the opportunity to see each location because most likely you're going to advance over your years through the type of housing that you're going to choose to live in until you graduate. Um, ask questions. Talk to students that are in the lobby when you're visiting the residence hall, finding out what they think about living on campus. Uh, take the time to challenge the admissions tour guides on what opportunities are presented at the university for students living on campus and how they can get involved or participate in activities uh, during the year. Uh, it's just really doing your homework, figuring out where you fit best, and then hopefully everything comes together and you're picking one of the state system universities. Great. That is some great advice. Dr. Helfrich, what advice do you have? I would agree with Kent, and along with that, I would say also ask questions about what living learning options there are that might be tied to academics or a particular area that you're interested in, um, per, whether you have a particular hobby or a particular um, interest. The different universities, particularly across um, the state system, in some shape or form, they have a living learning community that's tied to an activity or an academic program. And I would say explore that, um, find out what different activities they participate in. Um, are they tied to classroom, you know, classroom mm -hmm. experience? Mm -hmm. um, and what opportunities they can get out of that? So I think that to ask those questions about those opportunities. Well, Isela, you get, Isela, you get the last word here. Uh, how do you think your, your experience in student housing uh, contributed to your student success now that you're about to graduate? Um, it's, in, it's very much increased my um, 
leadership skill abilities and my interpersonal skill abilities because there are some very sensitive subjects or issues that happen where I have to switch caps, switch gears, and I'm like, hey, who am I going to contact next? And like, You've just, had to step up and be a leader. Yes, having to step up and be a leader, I have had those incidents. Like, I feel very confident in my abilities to lead a group of people or just to like any type of situation just about. Um, but definitely the interpersonal skills has greatly, I've really benefited from this position while my time here at um, Millersville University. That's terrific. So what's your advice? What should students ask uh, to make that best pick on what kind of student housing they should live in? Ask them how much food's going to be at the next RA program. <laughs> 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 There's always food. There always There's always food. food. Well, I appreciate your time on this. This is a great topic for me because uh, earlier in my career, I was an RA and a director of housing. And I want to tell you, I think every student who goes to college, if at, if at all possible, should make the time and make the availability to live in student housing if you can at all, because it will change your life, won't yeah, it? Absolutely. There you go. Well, thank you all very much. That's all the time we have today. Thank you, panelists, for being so awesome. And thank you for watching and learning more about student housing and its benefits to student success at our 14 state universities. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online 